The Talk Station presents Faith Matters, a look at contemporary stories and issues from a faith perspective. While this is a pre-recorded show, we are interested in your ideas, comments, and questions, and we urge you to email them to faithmatters at thetalkstation.com. Give me faith, trust what you On the talk station, Faith Matters. And welcome to our program for this Sunday morning. Good to have you along with us here today. And I'm Ben Ball, along with Reverend Robert Carnegie from Chapel by the Sea in Emerald Isle, and also Reverend Carl Zorowski from St. Peter's United Methodist in Moorhead City. Bishop Doc Loomis is away today. And uh, good day, gentlemen. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Good day. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's get started with uh, some of the different articles that are in the news uh, for today. And one that comes from uh, Alabama, from AL.com. Alabama Senate passes bill protecting faith-based adoption policies. The story written by Mike Kaysen begins, The Alabama Senate has passed a bill protecting the state licenses of faith-based child adoption agencies that choose not to place children with same-sex couples. The Alabama Placing Agency Inclusion Act says that the state could not refuse to license or relicense agencies because of policies based on religious beliefs. That protection would not apply to agencies that received any state or federal funding. The Senate passed the bill 23 to 9, mostly along party lines. Uh, the all eight uh, Senate Democrats voted against it. The bill um, by Representative Rich Wingo, uh, which could uh, um, return to the House, which could concur with the Senate amendment and give it final passage. I haven't read whether or not they have. Okay, now this is uh, this is interesting, uh, Robert, because um, this plays into um, what a lot of people would have thought many decades or several decades ago would not even been a choice, not even been a thought. Why, why wouldn't you license an agency that places kids in, in families, in homes? Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, that's how far our our um, mm-hmm. the um, culture has gone. culture has fallen. <laughs> it's really sad to see it, even in in Alabama, which is kind of the bedrock in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. You know, they're the deep South states and tend to be the most conservative and socially conservative, religiously conservative, I guess you could say, as well. And yet they're in the, battling in the in the legislature now. Yeah, so it passed in the Senate, uh, and um, now it's going over to the House. And um, in all likelihood, the way those two chambers operate, mm-hmm. I would say it will probably pass. And that it, will, it did pass. I just looked it up. Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I figured it would. And, of course, you know, what it's saying is that you can have there – there have always been faith-based, uh, you know, uh, adoption agencies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a big part of the ministry of Christianity of Christians is is uh, providing opportunities for placing kids, you know, in in homes, good homes. Well, in the earliest days, uh, Christians uh, were criticized by some because they would pick up the children who'd been abandoned on the side of the road and give them homes, you know. So, uh, and they and the rumors were flew around about what they were doing to the children. But yeah, exactly. And they were actually protecting them. Yeah. So that's sort of the that's always been kind of the norm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, through the pregnancy center, we don't do adoption directly mm-hmm. but we work with other organizations that do make referrals yeah right. exactly and so you know it's it's a it's a really important part of that process and and you know if you know anything about adoption i mean there's this major demand for i mean we're 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 losing over a million kids a year to abortion mm-hmm. that otherwise could be placed out into other families, and there's a waiting list for kids. Families all over the all market. over, and and it's just tragic that this is what we're we're bickering over. But anyway, um, you know, I'm glad to see it passed. I mean, obviously, yeah. I, I I the to be able to, I mean, there are lots of secular um, um, uh, agencies, adoption agencies. That will place kids in a same sex couple. Same sex couple. Yeah. And so right. it isn't like you're taking anything away. You're just providing an alternative. And I think that's something that we really, hopefully, we can wake up 
yeah. and see that there is a there's an important need for both. Carl, is this uh, any empathy for the the view of the Democrats that are quoted in here that say the bill would sanction discrimination or is bigotry in the first degree? People on the air right now can't see me shaking my head. <laughs> um, that's the kind of stuff that drives me mad. Um, I mean, there are other options. Right. There are other agencies for people to go to, to adopt children. And, you know, if I go somewhere and I want a service provided to me and they say, well, we're not going to help you, well, then I'm going to go find somebody who is. I'm not going to go and contact an attorney or contact the ACLU and start screaming about my rights and discrimination and all of that. Um, you know, I think in some sense – if you were a faith-based child placement service and you were not receiving state funds, because that's one of the things spelled out in the article. State or federal. State that's or right. federal state funds. Or federal. Um, um, then, you know, then you, you still have that choice to say who gets the child and who doesn't. Um, but now, if I'm that agency and I say, well, I'm not going to place a child with this couple because of these religious beliefs that I hold, then um, if the state comes in and says, no, you have to, then I'm going to feel like that's discrimination against me. Right. Right. It, 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 well, let's look at it this way, uh, Robert. I, I think, and I think there's an answer to this question, is, is that um, what if there were no other agencies available and only faith-based agencies available? Uh, would, th would there be a, a case in Alabama to – to do that or in any place? Well, I'm sure they'd claim one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know that it's legitimate. I think I think that that is such a personal thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, I mean, you know, we go round and round on the whole abortion issue and and the decision to I mean, one of my f favorite programs on TV right now is this one where they f go and find the biological mother mm -hmm. or father. Yeah, or or sibling, and you know they do the they they find them and they bring them back together and and I mean it's just a fascinating um, sequence of events to take place. So, look, um, it, where you put the child, it, mm -hmm. it really doesn't need to be. The government really doesn't need to be in that process. If if this were again giving a free market situation too, if if you had if you had no secular agencies available, one would come, one would start. I there mean, would I mean, be, there would be oh, right. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. because and that's would, literally what has happened. And they would be also they would be eligible for state and federal funding. Correct, which is kind of bizarre. Still, yeah, but, that's uh, exactly right. they get an advantage. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so so what we've seen this is again that intrusion that crossing that line. That bright line that that um, you know so how far the state can mm -hmm. impinge, infringe on um, the the freedom of religious rights, our First Amendment rights, um, is is always going to be. Into, they're always going to try to push in. We've always got to push back. So I think that again illustrates, you know, the importance of pro of promoting this. So us even talking about this this, mm -hmm. this morning, a lot of people never even saw that article, and in every state. Every state's having to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we're having to do it state by state. And I believe that's the best way to do it, frankly. I'm not saying there should be the federal right. top-down decision on this kind of stuff. I like how you – Yeah, my voice <laughs> changed in it. Change your voice to do the federal part. <laughs> I'm not a fan of, uh, of intrusive, centralized government, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now, I – I would imagine that should this, you know, as you mentioned, Robert, um, you know, there may be a lot of people who don't even know about this article, don't even know what's happened here. But, um, you know, when when our Sunday morning show is picked up by the national networks, you know, and, yeah. and any spread day, around. Any day any, now, um, that'll happen. I think what people are going to, um, on, on a national level, what would be emphasized here was the fact that it was Alabama. Correct. 
Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. They'll, they'll place it like a lot of media does. They'll place Alabama in, the, in its backwoods territory. Well, you know, yeah, and, and those the knuckle that, draggers and, down there. And this <laughs> this article here, you know, talked about how the decision was made along party lines. Yeah, and that all the Democrats voted against it, you know, and one Republican voted against it. So I guess it wasn't completely along party lines, but. Right. Um, this is just another example of the uh, ideological division that has come uh, from politics and is affecting everything. You know, we've got another article we're going to talk about today about a march, the, mm-hmm. the science march, and that whole thing. You know, it's all everything in this country today is divided into those who have a D after their name and those who have an R. And what matters here in this article is – Children exactly. who aren't a D, who aren't an R, children who don't have a home, but they are a pawn, need a home, here, and they're and they're being used as a pawn mm-hmm. to push agendas. Now it's interesting in the comments for this mostly uh, are actually in favor of this, uh, of this law, that. but uh, one that says Alabamans get ready to foot the bill for another legal fight over a bill that's unconstitutional. We're seeing that in in North Carolina, a lot of legal fights over over legislation. Uh, but here it will be it'll be hard pressed, I think, to, to make that case because of the access that that anybody any couple would have uh, to other other sources. Right. So yeah, uh, we'll have more to come in a moment here on Faith Matters on the Talk Station FM 107 and AM 1240. I hope you'll stay with us. Welcome back to Faith Matters here on the Talk Station. I'm Ben Ball and joined with uh, Reverend Carl Zorowski from uh, St. Peter's United Methodist Church and Reverend Robert Cornegie from Chapel by the Sea in Emerald Isle as we uh, talk about certain issues of faith and in the news for today. And one of those, of course, occurred uh, just recently is the March for Science. There were marches all over, including in our local area, marches uh, that were uh, as part of Earth Day. Uh, and the march on uh, uh, April 22nd uh, took place, um, and the or I think it was yeah April 22nd. And the stream article that came out actually ahead of that, and then I have uh, uh, some comments from the same or similar writer uh, from that same organization uh, after it says the march that trampled science. <laughs> It says, the march on April 23rd was never really about science. From its inception, it gave every appearance of being just another case of political activism masquerading as science. One more reason to be suspicious of scientists, as if that were helpful. Uh, The march website shows that the organizers know better. They acknowledge that science should be self-critical rather than dogmatic. We support science education that teaches children and adults to think critically, ask questions, and evaluate truth based on the weight of evidence. An earlier version of the site even went so far as to encourage different views. Our diversity is our greatest strength. But openness like that leaves no room for dogma and what's good, uh, what is uh, good is a protest without dogma. After alarm over climate change policy was the first motive for the march, though they've added more, how do you promote the beating of a drum without also insisting that it's the right drum? Uh, and uh, and uh, Carl, I think this is, uh, this is really indicative actually of... Um, of a culture that that is that is now, or perhaps a faith that's trying to find a culture. Put it that way. Scientism. You know, this is mm-hmm. a, about a dogma of science, right? I mean, right. I mean, right. so much of this was about. Oh, they say it wasn't political, but it was all. It was all political. It was all about funding and about uh, right. supporting a particular view. Yeah, I heard uh, on NPR last week. Um, I heard one of the organizers of the march was interviewed, and and he said, now, this march has nothing to do with partisanship. (laughs) And at that point, I think my radio speaker fell out of the door of my car. (laughs) Um, No, it's, you know, this just goes to show more of that division that we have in this country. And people are pushing one idea or one way of thinking, and they want you to hear them, but they also want you to agree with them 100%. 100%. You know, um, if, if, yeah, no I as, yeah, if I as a Christian, I want to accept t- 
teachings of science, which I do, and I think that the two can work very well together. Mm -hmm. And I think as Christians, we should look at it that way. Okay, Absolutely. science benefits us greatly. Okay, um, but I get this feeling that some of these people who are marching are saying, "No, we don't want you to even try to fit your faith in with our science because our science trumps your faith." Okay, maybe that's not a good word to use right now, but our science trumps your faith. And um, in the last four months, it seems like we've become a country that's more interested in marching than anything else. Yeah, doing, we want to march and scream and yell until everybody sees things exactly the way we do. And you know, the article talks about how in science – you, you always need to be open to other possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, until something is proven, anything is on the table. But they want to come and say, all right, this is exactly the way it is. Well, do you have the proof yet? Well, we've got some things that point to it. Well, that's good. That's great. But do you have the proof? Well, no, but you need to accept this as fact. As consensus. Right, consensus, consensus becomes okay. consensus becomes fact, and 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 that is a dogma. I mean, isn't it? Too? Well, it's called political correctness. Yeah. Is actually the official term, <laughs> and um, that that we should be understanding this about that. There's uh, there's scientific correctness, and then there's political correctness. Right, and we are, and the, that doesn't necessarily mean they're the same thing. But a lot of people say that political correctness trumps scientific correctness. And, how, you know, how, what are some examples of that? I mean, we see it every day. You know, we were just talking about the whole thing about um, adoption and mm -hmm. all of that. And, right. and, and uh, one of the motivators of adoption now is, is an alternative to abortion. Sure. Instead right. of aborting the baby, mm -hmm. you, can, you can release the baby to a loving set of parents that, that want a baby, and then you, you're you verifying that that fetus, which they claim to be a just a mass of tissue, of tissue yeah. is actually a being. It's a human being, probably with a different gender. It's a 50-50 poss possibility there, and our, our, let's say um, package, and um, they um, and that also could have a different DNA, a whole, whole different blood type, everything else. That's mm -hmm. not a part of that woman's body. That is a different being in there. That that's actually a child that has value and we ought to protect. And so scientifically, it's been proven that. Mm -hmm. But the political, cor cor the correct scientific position is that it that is a distinct human being the politically correct position on that is that it's not it's a part of the woman's body and she has the right to do anything with it that she wants kill it or not well uh, which is right political correctness or scientific correctness and they've abandoned scientific correctness and and we've got a real problem here because that that holds true in climate science as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have models they've developed these models they've been around for 20 years now and they're they're terrible models and they've been proven to be incorrect and then we have scientific data taken from satellites and from buoys and from other things. And what are they doing? They are, and they've, Noah just admitted this, that they have been cooking the books on the scientific data to match the politically correct position on it. So they've abandoned scientific correctness for political correctness. So to say that March was anything but a political partisan um, show show thing, mm -hmm. you know, an event to to uh, for media. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. The uh, William Briggs wrote a follow up uh, shortly after the march. In fact, he writes. Uh, he says, "I am pleased to report that the asinine March for Science has been a dud." He says, um, uh, "The Independent quoted some guy called Peter Lipke, who said, I 'I'm a science professor.' This prepped the reader, signaling some science solid science was on its way." 
Lipke continued, the current administration has shown complete disregard for facts and truth. So it's nonpartisan, by the way. Um, uh, Now, scientifically, this is a dumb statement because, of course, it is false. It is not only false, it's petulant fantasy. President Trump has only been in office a short while. It's not like he's taken to television and said, my fellow Americans equals MC squared is inefficient. I propose to make America great again with C cubed. (laughs) So uh, the most perpetually outraged to have him... uh, I have on him that his administration removed the global warming propaganda from the White House website. Big deal. So saying that this is um, this is this the March for Science implies that you would have somebody who would be against science. I mean, against science in general. So I was I was waiting for you know I'm I'm pro gravity. I mean, except for what yeah. it does to me as I get older. But uh, uh, the uh, uh, but <laughs> I don't know who's going to march against it. Well, this 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 follow up article that you read, um, you know, he began by referring to the march as the asinine march on science. Okay, and unfortunately, that type of statement doesn't help mm-hmm. with the with the argument. Okay, it comes down to name calling, you know, and the fact that I am a Christian and that I teach creationism to a degree. I mean, I believe that God created everything. How did He do it? I'm not sure. But he did it, all right? And because I want to say God is behind it all, that makes me a flat earth knuckle-dragger, which is the names that – maybe they don't say the names, but that's what's being implied. That if I'm a man of faith, (laughs) Mm -hmm. then I cannot be a man of science because the two cannot fit together. But they can. And science can reveal so much to us about God and what God has done and what God is continuing to do. But – uh, it, it makes me wonder the scientists. Well, I, all right, all right, and I'm I'm babbling here, but my my father, my father is a scientist, all right, and he thinks very scientifically. And I was explaining to him that you know even in the way numbers work together in an equation, I said God can reveal Himself to you through that. The laws of physics, God can reveal Himself through that. Yeah. You know, and that you can't just block God out and say, you know, science here, there's no room for God. I'd say there's a lot of room for God in science, just like there's room for science you know, in you, faith. You think about the um, um, the founding uh, Christians uh, or Christians back through the centuries. They're the ones that preserved scientific discovery and scientific thought yes. and people of faith. Well, people yeah. of faith. In fact, you know, Islam is accounted for some of its positions because of scientific development, because mm-hmm. they had this worldview that said that there was a creator mm-hmm. and that by studying creation – Romans and Psalm both mm-hmm. say this, that you can actually learn. You not only learn right. about creation, you learn about the creator. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's That's like right. the painting on mm-hmm. the wall. You know, you can learn something about the painting by studying the painting, but you can learn something about the painter. You can't learn everything, but you can learn certain characteristics right. about the and painter. And attributes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so when you start throwing in consensus, you know, it's, it's, it's such a paradox because consensus science is an oxymoron. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. Does, it has no meaning. Right. It, it has opposite meaning. And what you get is flat earth society when you right. start claiming consensus science because the whole purpose of science is to challenge the consensus more to come in a moment here on Faith Matters on the talk station FM 107 and AM 1240. And welcome back to Faith Matters here on the talk station FM 107 and AM 1240. And I'm Ben Ball and joined today by uh, Reverend Carl Zorowski from uh, St. Peter's United Methodist Church and Reverend Robert Cornegie from Chapel by the Sea in Emerald Isle. At least that's what I think their names are, at least for now. For now. Because they that's, could be changing. That's the way I self-identify yes, today. That's, and that's sort of the story that we have <laughs> uh, coming up here. Uh, and it, it, the headline on this story from AJC.com is said, In the name of Allah? Question mark. Family challenges state on daughter's name. An Atlanta family is at odds with the state over their right to give their daughter the last name of their choosing. 
Elizabeth Handy and Belial Walk uh, claim that Georgia officials are refusing to grant their daughter Zalika Graceful Loriana Allah a birth certificate. With the backing of the ACLU of Georgia, they are suing the state on grounds that they are being denied the basic benefits. And that's a key part there, being denied basic benefits. And with the uh, state's decision, lawyers for the couple say they have not been able to receive medical coverage under Medicaid and are prevented from obtaining food stamps through the SNAP program, which is the state program there. Government has no business telling parents what they can and cannot name their children, said ACLU of the Georgia Executive Director and Andrea Young. The, the crux of it, as far as the rules go for Georgia, was that if you have a recognized birth father and a recognized birth mother, obviously you have that, uh, is that the name of the child needs to be one or the other or a combination of both. Uh, and that was that's the rule in Georgia. In order to that's state law, state law in Georgia. That's right. Uh, and uh, and the ACLU is challenging that reading of the law, though. By the way, saying it doesn't read exactly that way, but that has been the regulation for some time and been upheld in the past. So they are they are challenging that this that the child can be named whatever they want to name them. Um, Robert, what, what do you think about this? Well, I, you know, and just to continue on that first little thought mm-hmm. is that. The the way it normally works, if you want to change your last name, mm-hmm. you can do that. You just have to go through another procedure to be able to do that. You just you can't do that on your birth certificate. You have to take the family name, and uh, for them to to not want to have that family name there, that the state says no, you can't do that. But then once. You, you can you can get your a new birth certificate mm-hmm. issued with a different name. You just have to jump through some other hoops, pay some other fees. But um, it is fascinating, isn't it? That um, the 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 thing that really was the kicker on this was that they were not going to be able to get their welfare benefits yeah. from uh, because of this this problem. The state was going to deny that is denying them uh, Medicaid, not Medicare, Medicaid. As well as food stamps, they can't get those those social service um, services. So um, this is where kind of the rubber meets the road, and it just shows how how wacky our whole uh, welfare system has become. You know about who who is in control of the system. You know, mm-hmm. is the state does the state have the right to set up these kind of boundaries and these conditions? Um, based on convention, this is sort and, of the convention. Yeah, and I've read elsewhere that part of, part of the state's reasoning here, and it would be reasoning in a lot of places, is that it's so that uh, somebody just can't claim benefits for somebody else of any name. That's exactly you know? right. So, so they have to have at least some connection here, be able to put a, a, a name to them. Well, your name is also kind of your your tribal identity. I mean, I, and when I say tribal, I mean your family, mm-hmm. your roots. I mean, this is who you are. Right. I mean, you know, we have unusual last names, Carl and I, and, uh, you know, we, you know, they're difficult to spell and they're difficult to pronounce, but we hold on to those names because there's a line of, of, I'm in a, we're both in a generational line here right. and that's an important thing. And so to, to play around with that, I think the state, you know, individually has an interest in that. As which uh, apparently they can uh, they can change it through a petition to the superior court, which I was surprised that you could do that with a minor anyway. But um, uh, but they they could change it later. But in order to start, they it have to have something has on the to birth have the family name, one of the family names, or both. Mm-hmm. Right. right. That's you got three choices. Right. Now, now, of course, this came to a lot of attention, Carl, because of the name they chose was Allah for a last name, right. for a surname. Right. And and even though uh, the court says or the government says it has nothing to do with that, and the ACLU is jumping in and saying, well, maybe not so. Maybe it's not the case. But um, uh, what do you think? I mean, is this uh, we should be able to name our kids whatever we want to name them? Well, Frank Zappa <laughs> um, and I don't know if he's ever been mentioned on this show. Uh, he I named his first. child yeah. um, Moon Unit. Yeah, it's yeah. Dweezel, okay. but, Dweezel and Moon Unit. They did have the last name Zappa. Zappa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I look at this family. They say they're quoted here as saying, "Simply put, 
we have a personal understanding that we exercise in regards to the names. It is nothing that we want to go into detail about because it is not important. Apparently, it is important to mm-hmm. them. It's important enough um, that the ACLU got involved with it once again. You know, we live in such a litigious society now that if you can't have your way, call the ACLU and they'll get it for you. All right. I don't know if this is true in North Carolina, but uh, the parents' employers are listed on the Georgia birth certificates, and that both of them were listed as self-employed. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty obvious from their need for food stamps and Medicaid. Mm-hmm. You know, they are living off the government. I mean, this mm-hmm. is this is really sort of pitiful. Well, quite and that's frankly. A, yeah. <laughs> when when uh, I was reading about the family saying they have very you know strong feelings about the names that they chose, well, I was curious about Zalika or Zalika, Z A L Y K H A, and so I looked it up. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought maybe it has some deep meaning to it. And what it is, is it's like this tiny little village in the Ukraine. Oh. (laughs) And that's all there is to it. Mm. Um, So my my younger daughter, her name is Amber. And before she was born, we were trying to figure out what to name her. We decided to call her Kirsten. And people would ask us, why? Well, how are you going to spell that? And I said, okay, she's going to go through her whole life for the first half of her life having to spell her last name. I'm not going to make her have to spell her first name, too. So mm-hmm. we called her Amber instead, which is which is simpler. Okay, what are these parents doing to this child? Giving the child this name like this that, you know, as the child is growing up, and the child's got to explain why their last name mm-hmm. is Allah. In, in, in this, and where do they live now? They live in Georgia. Okay. Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. So, uh, you know, again, is this something where the writers of the article, once this story gets nationwide, are going to go, well, there you go. It's the South again. That's how they are. Hmm. Bunch of bigots. This child was born almost two years ago. Right. Yeah, this case (laughs) has been winding around. Still doesn't have a birth certificate, so they can't get social services for the child. This is just amazing to me. This is just just is, is a little snapshot into where our culture, you know, the out at the fringes of the culture, you have these kind of battles going on, and the ACLU is getting involved in this stuff. Right. I mean, it is just remarkable, isn't it? I mean, uh, and and I, I, what I didn't see on here was. <laughs> Any uh, uh, Muslims coming in and kind of weighing in because I would think naming a child Allah would have been would have been quite uh, blasphemous. Right, right. It would be like somebody naming their child Johnny Jehovah, you mm-hmm. know, in yeah. the Old Testament. Yeah, or uh, Billy God. Well, Grace Slick from uh, Jefferson Airplane, when she had her child, she said, we're going to name her God, but with a small G, because we need to be humble about it. <laughs> Two rock references in I know, one I, segment. This guy's good. Yeah. I like this. Well, I didn't become a pastor till later in life. <laughs> yeah. And I actually have those records. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a, um, but it, th- this is something that, I mean, we... We kind of uh, uh, acquiesce to uh, people that want to name first names, any number sure. of things. I mean, we've always joked. I mean, last name Ball, we always came up with a lot of them. I was going to have twins, Ping and Pong, you know, yeah. and 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 I, and I still think Tether would have been a great name for a girl. I've got a good friend yeah. or had a good friend named Flim. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> they, Ball. Yeah, they, they come in all, all different ways. Uh, so... Uh, I've heard that all my life. I've mean, heard jokes about my name. I would hate to see you know see a young a young woman here have to explain that all her life. You know, no doubt that by the time she was twelve, she would be going to court <laughs> and changing it. And it may be twelve before the court to this case well, is that's resolved. True. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, look. I mean, I think the state has an interest. It's, and, it's overreach, though. Yeah, exactly. You know. Uh, uh, all right, overreach by the ACLU and uh, the the state. I don't know. I don't know if they should just acquiesce to this or not. I mean, well, you op- you know that's the way that you know once you open that door. The the problem is, yeah, that then you then you start claiming people. This is 
this is the part that's not addressed really in this article. But you start claiming people are are yours, be, even though they have a completely different name. They cannot, you can't trace them in any particular way. Uh, you claim them, them as yours in order to get benefits. Right. Exactly. And and that's what they're trying to avoid. They're not they're not down on whatever they want to name their child. They're just down on the on a, on a, trying to claim some benefits that wouldn't be theirs, or opening the door for others. Yeah, I guess I guess if if the parents had decided they wanted to name their child Mary Smith, that would not have flown either with the state of Georgia because no, it's not right. the same last name. But because of the last name they chose, all of a sudden it's this huge huge issue. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and the the article doesn't say anything about their faith. I mean, it doesn't indicate it, in no, any it way. No, it doesn't they indicate just, that this is important they just, for them for that that's reason. A, that's, a, that's a cool name is basically yeah. what they were, was the you know, decision on that. They yeah. just liked the name. And, and to go a couple of years now uh, and deny this, this girl her name is, is really kind of sad in many ways. And just another example of culture that's on the yeah. skids. We'll have a... Uh, uh, more to talk about here in just a moment here. But in fact, it'll be really interesting in this uh, last segment yes. coming up next. <laughs> and welcome back to Faith Matters on the talk station, FM 107 and AM 1240. And thanks for joining us here today. I'm Ben Ball, along with Reverend Robert uh, uh, Cornegy and also Reverend Carl Zorowski here. I was going to conflict, conflate your names here <laughs> after that last I segment. They were hard to say. <laughs> I think I've mispronounced yours for ten years now. Uh, but the final article here today is interesting because it's it's um, perhaps indicative of where another part of our culture is going to, as well. This is out of the Denver Post, and the Colorado House rejects late attempt to bar pot use in churches. Yes, that's what we said. That's what the, uh, the headline is. The last-ditch attempt aimed at the International Church of Cannabis was blasted by members of both parties as an unconstitutional restriction on religion. The Colorado House on Thursday rejected a last-minute attempt to ban pot use in churches, an amendment that was introduced on the same day the controversial International Church of Cannabis opened in Denver. Of course, you know what day that was. It was on 420, April the 20th. Proposed by the state representative Dan uh, uh, Pabin, a uh, uh, Democrat, who says an amendment to a broader bill on pot use would have barred pot use in churches while still allowing exceptions for religious purposes. Pabin uh, argued that it was needed to protect Colorado's reputation after the International Church of Cannabis made national news. And what they made national news about was they took over and they, a building and declared themselves a church. They filed with the state as a nonprofit uh, a group, uh, which they actually have a name to it now. Let me see if I can find that. The the elevationism, elevationism they've they've created uh, to uh, I guess reach the upper floors, uh, and they are um, uh, and that's how they have filed with the state to be a nonprofit church. The International Church of Cannabis. They they took over what was a uh, another church in the past. It was a, a apostolic church, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and very <laughs> so here we are, <laughs> here where we are in this society, guys. Uh, at the International uh, Church of Cannabis. I keep on saying house. <laughs> International <laughs> Church of Cannabis is now um, officially a church, and extremism is a is a religion or elevationism is a religion well somebody's got to say it so i will this brings a whole new meaning to a potluck dinner <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you know how can how can you call well as christian i look at this i say how can you call this a church well by definition what is a church right. it's a house of worship mm-hmm. um what are these people worshiping well an from what state. from what i have seen looking at their website mm-hmm. um this has nothing to do with god and it has everything to do with cannabis and so they are worshiping something else they've chosen to worship cannabis so does that mean that if i wanted to open the international church of cats i could do that and i could elevate the cat to a 
uh, position of a deity and begin my own religion. Be very Egyptian. Yeah, I was going to say it would be very. It would be very restoring a previous religion. But you know, but then, but then I could, you know, uh, get tax exempt -exempt status status. and that's right, and all of that. Mm -hmm. But this is this is really nothing more than a than a club. But what about though the the legislature though protecting them? They they voted against that uh, uh, restriction to allow this uh, church uh, 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 already filed with the state, already met all the requirements of the state. This is in Colorado now. Uh, they they Both sides of the aisle said that this would be an unlawful restriction on them and an unlawful restriction on religion. And we, you know... We we have a hard time, don't we, Robert? We got we got to kind of support that thought. This is but, Colorado, folks. Yeah, this is where all the Californians moved. And <laughs> well, uh, well, and and one and one Miamian in particular, because the leader of this uh, this Steve church, Burke, the whatever. guy who owns it, Steve Burke, he ran for mayor in Miami Beach in in uh, two thousand and twelve or two thousand in two thousand and twelve. On the legalized marijuana platform. No, actually, no? I didn't say that. On his, his website is still up huh. for Steve Burke for mayor of Miami Beach. Uh, he has the, he does have a 2020 vision, which he says is clear and focused. It may not be as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> may not be quite as focused. Uh, but he doesn't live in Miami any longer. Now he lives in, in Denver. Yeah. I just, you know, the convenience stores nearby that church must be business must be booming when they come out with the munchies and uh, they've got to go get something to eat. This is, this is the, you know, we, we all, the, the, there's a, uh, uh, logic fallacy that's mm-hmm. called the slippery slope fallacy. Right. And sometimes it is a fallacious to, to use that. Other times it's correct to use it. And it's not a, it's not fallacious. And so this is this is the slippery slope when you legalize from you know how did it begin? It started with medical, mm-hmm. medical marijuana, medical yeah. marijuana. So you had shops that could sell. You had to have a prescription, I guess, to go in and get it. And mm-hmm. then that changed to well, if you're just feeling bad, you can go in and get it. And then that changed to. In Colorado and several other states, it's over the counter. It's just over the counter, whatever. Yeah, and uh, up to a, an amount. Now they do have an amount, mm-hmm. you know. And the theory is you're getting the, you know, getting it out of the back alleys and whatnot. So we're. But what we all knew from the '70s and on, when the discussions of legalization were taking place, is that eventually money is going to rule. That's exactly right. right. Yeah, money that's and right. Taxes and money and taxes. There's, uh-huh. a, there's an industry and there's taxes and there's money to be made. Uh, here's a quote in a different article that came out of uh, 5280.com, uh, which is, explores issues in Denver. It says, local attorney Rachel Gillette, who specializes in marijuana law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a special. Here we go. Now, says, uh, if all they're doing is pro- providing a gathering place where people can worship and consume and profit isn't their motive, I think the court could easily find that elevationism is a sincere belief and they're free to practice their religion. Right, and, and, and look at what um, Representative Joe Salazar, a Democrat from Thornton, he called this um, proposed law a nanny state approach to governing. He said, this is saying to people, we don't like the way you worship. Now, do I agree with the way they're worshiping? I don't really think it's relevant whether I agree or not. And so what this guy is doing, the way I see it, is he's saying, all right, we have identified them as a church. We have said, yes, you are a church. So we can't go regulating how they're worshiping. And so he's kind of saying, okay, we, we've got this law in place. So now if we make this change here, then we're opening the door for us to regulate how anybody worships anywhere, and I don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's obviously smoking pot. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> The point, you know, one of the big problems they're having is how do you, because you get into an altered state, mm-hmm. your your sensibilities are, are not are different. Not your little focused. thing about focus <laughs> yeah. is really true. Yeah. You're easily, you know, from from what I've heard, that um, that can happen, and so the, um, the and so they're having a hard time. You know, you can do a breathalyzer mm-hmm. on alcohol, right? You can't do that with pot. And or they haven't come up with, with an equivalent way to say you're one toke over the line 
buddy. You know, you should not be driving. And so they're going to be coming out of this church. I assume they meet on Sunday mornings. And you've got people yep. high getting in their cars. Getting in their cars and uh, going that, to which the is already uh, a problem Golden in Corral. I yeah. mean, you know, it's it's gonna be I mean, we can kind of joke about it a little bit, but it is, you know, from yeah. a obviously from a Christian point of view, this is just the service is, is over when the bizarre. hot sign comes on. Pardon me? The service is over when the hot sign comes on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, the, um, uh, the, and by the way, Steve Burke, who I mentioned about ran for mayor in Miami beach. Yeah. That was also part of his platform. I'm looking at it now to about decriminalization of marijuana. That's right. Uh, so this is, um, this is, he's already transported this to Colorado, his, uh, this idea. And, and then, uh, what is but you know, where do we go with that? We're talking about slippery slope. Where do we go with now? Uh, with worship practices as well, legalization of worship practices. Do we take animal sacrifice? Do we go there on that? Uh, that's legal inside that church. Yeah. You know, do we go with uh, Sharia law and genital mutilation? You know, do we go with that inside the church. That's a religious practice, as do far we, as some people are concerned. So, so yeah, and we take it and we laugh about it here when we're talking about smoking pot or, or worshiping or cannabis. But then, then where do we go? I mean, where's the you know, the the next one? Well, you know, Native so, Americans have, uh, they have those a, that use peyote or psilocybin or whatever you, you want to call it. You know, they are, they have certain, there are certain groups that have within there that can, can do that. They're, they're federalized. Within their rules uh, reservation on, though. That's within, right. Which but is this a, is out in the community. Yeah. This is just, uh, so it's going to be, uh, you know, here we go. Slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you know, where we talk about where we, we want a government to avoid overreach, uh, you know, where, but where do we want the government to stop or, or where do we want as a people to also stop and, and say, no, 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 that's well, enough. Did you look at the comments on this article? No. I haven't one, one fellow said, um, smoking marijuana in church is out of line, but ritually drinking what people believe is actual human blood is part of one's, is part of one of the world's largest mainstream religions. And then someone else said, why? I'll tell you what. I won't smoke in your church if you won't consume mock flesh and blood in mine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There it's, you go. It's, a, it's going to be, is this isn't over. It's this a brave new world. <laughs> it's a divided world. Thanks for joining us here on Faith Matters on the talk station. Thank you for joining us for Faith Matters. Email your comments, questions, and suggestions to faithmatters at the talkstation.com. Give me faith, trust what you is a production of the talk station.